Hello everyone, hope you're well. This is a video I've been meaning to do for some time. I get the same question every time regarding power packs. Which one should I buy? And it's a question I can't answer, but I can put various bits together in this video that will give you the information to choose which is the best one to do what you want to do. And we're going to use this one here. This is the EcoFlow River 2 Pro which is uh, renowned to be the best of its size in its category for a number of different reasons. And there's a separate video about this. I'll put it up here so you can see the full video about it. But I'm just using this for demonstration purposes to explain to people what I mean when you need to go through some numbers to understand if this or another one or what size and what facilities you need in a power pack to meet your needs in your camper van or wherever you're going to use it. So basing this on the EcoFlow River 2 Pro, how are we going to get power actually into the unit? And how long does it take? So if you're considering something that you want to charge quickly and take away for your in use, or if you want to charge it in various ways while you're away, you need to know the specification. So this here, through its mains lead, this unit has just a mains lead, it doesn't have the power brick, so these are generally more efficient. And this unit here will charge fully from mains in 1 hour and 17 minutes, and it'll take a maximum of 940 watts going in. So it's a very fast charging unit. That might be part of your criteria. Will it take solar? Yes, it will take solar. You can plug solar panels directly into this. So the maximum amount of solar that this will take is 220 watts. So 220 watts, there's no point buying a massive solar panel or listening, linking it to lots of different solar on your roof if that's too much for this because it will just shut the charging system down to protect it. So you need to understand if you're going to run it on solar, what actually you're going to run it against. Is it going to be a portable panel? Is it going to be fixed panels on the roof of your camper van, your boat or whatever it's going to be? But the maximum power this will take is 220 watts. So you need to know that. And what type of connections it uses. So this one for the input on the back it uses this type of connector. And there's various different types of connectors. There's various ones like this. So you need to be looking at what connector you need with this. With the EcoFlow models, you just buy a lead that has this type of connector on. And the majority of solar panels have these type of male and female connectors on. And these are polarity conscious and you can only plug them in one way, which is nice and easy. But when you plug solar panels into one of these... This actually has something inside called an MPPT. And basically what that means is solar, if you can imagine solar, the amount of power that's coming in is going to vary. It might be a real sunny day and then all of a sudden the clouds come over and you lose power and then it comes back up again. So it's not a constant steady flow of power. And the MPPT manages that flow, flow of power to maximise the input into this, but not to damage it. So this has a built-in unit for that. So you can plug solar panels into this up to 220 watts and you look at the voltage, how much voltage it will take as well. So the specification of any unit should tell you what wattage it needs and what voltage it is on um, solar in particular. Likewise, this lead here comes with the River 2 Pro and this is charge it from a cigarette socket. And this plugs in at the back. There's a socket at the back there. And you just simply plug that orange connector in and plug that into your cigarette lighter. And this will take a maximum of 100 watts input into this. And this actually comes with it. So if your intentions are to use this when you're out and about and to charge it from your car, your camper van or even your boat, you know you're going to get the lead with this unit and you can just plug it straight in. So that's covering the charging, actually get the charge into this. Solar, car charging and your mains charging side of things. So we know how much power can go into this and how the power can go in. There's also a USB-C which you can charge it with as well. So there's another input there that can charge it. Um, but they're the main ones, the main three. Now we talk or you hear lots of people talking about lithium phosphate and lithium ion batteries. 
and the, the recycling charges or sequences, how many you can actually do. So this again, being one of the top products, has a lithium phosphate battery. And you may see those as LIFO4 Pro batteries or marked in other ways, but basically this is the latest generation of lithium phosphate batteries. And that means that you can charge it and discharge it up to about 3000 times. And if it was a lithium ion battery, you're probably as low as five to 800 times. Now, all that means is that it will still work, but the capacity, how much power it will hold. So if you had a jug of water and you put a litre of water in that and filled it to the brim, you could do that 3000 times by pouring it out, filling it up, pouring it out, filling it up, and it always have the same amount in there. And then when it gets to around the 3,000 times you've done that, it will start to depreciate. And it will depreciate by 20%. So it won't fill completely to the litre, it will be 800 millilitres. And that's what we mean about the cycles within the batteries. So not just with these lithium phosphate camper van batteries, if you look at a real good one, um, like the EcoTree one I've got in my van, I'll put a video up here all about that. That's the same technology top quality um, equipment and the best quality equipment you can get but what that actually means is you don't lose any power you just use the volume of power so if you was to run something on this and it normally lasted an hour before it switched off and ran out of power it, w it would last 80 percent of that time you'd still get the same amount of current coming through this. It wouldn't depreciate in the current levels. So your 12 volts and your mains power that you get out of it will still be the same. It's just the capacity it will hold. So that's why these um, particular ones and others on the market have the lithium phosphate batteries in, which are far superior to the original lithium iron. And the lithium phosphate batteries are safer batteries as well. You can literally smash them to pieces and it doesn't cause any problems. But you won't want to do that, would you? So we've got the power in and we know what type of battery we've got. Getting the power out of this. In all units, it will give you some information. So actually in the documentation for this unit, under the frequently asked questions, what devices and products can this run from its AC? So AC is the alternating current, which is the three pin plug that you'd have in the UK, or generally known as mains power that you'd have in the house. And this is 50 hertz for the UK and 60 hertz for the um, American market and some other countries and that's switchable in this unit so if if you wanted to run it on 60 hertz in a different country you can do that and it's changeable inside but in the UK it's 50 hertz and these run between about 220 to 240 volts um, and there's three sockets on this so this actually says um, it will run devices up to 800 watts with a peak of 1,600 watts. So if you're trying to run something through this, you're, gonna, you're thinking of buying this unit, taking your appliances out of the house, out of your kitchen at home, and bringing them away on your camper van, they might be much more power than this can cope with. So if you've got a kettle in your house, it might run at 2,500 watts. This wouldn't run it because it's over its capacity. So you need to be really careful and understand exactly what you're going to run through your mains power of this and what the appliances are. And on each appliance, certainly in the UK, there will be a sticker on that and it'll tell you how much wattage it needs. So you want to buy the lowest wattage possible to actually run on your device. Even if you get a real big unit, you still don't want to waste the power. So if you're buying an air fryer, our air fryer runs at about 850 watts. This will actually run it because it'll deal through the peak um, uh, element of it as well. So this is capable of running that. Our kettle is about 600 watts, 650 watts, and our toaster is about 700 watts. So all the products we've got in our camper van are low wattage, specifically to use on our power packs. Not just this ones, but other ones as well. So having a handy, easy, this is 17 kilograms. It's not too big, it's not too bulky, but you need to understand if the capacity will actually run what you're running on it or you want to run on it. So hair dryers, air straighteners, all those questions you always get, will it run this? Will it run that? 
and I say, well, you need to have a look at the wattage and you need to have a look at the power pack you're thinking of buying and make sure that there's enough capacity within that. So if this has a capacity, say, of a thousand watts and you plug something into it, a thousand watts, this will run for one hour, one kilowatt hour. If you have something of 500 watts, it will run for twice as long. And that's how to do the numbers. Think of what else you're going to run from it as well. Lots of people say, I need a power pack with mains, mains sockets on it so I can run my computer or my laptop. Well, I use Apple products and Apple produce these, which is a 12 volt regulated supply, which will actually run from the 12 volt socket on the actual unit. And this saves power because you, within here, as well as taking the power out to run the actual unit, you'll actually use some power to run the inverter inside. And what the inverter does, it takes the 12 volt power inside of this from the batteries and it puts it through some, some electrical equipment, bridge rectifiers and capacitors to transpose it into a safe voltage for using with electrical equipment to come out of here but that absorbs some power as well. So the inverter will use some power and this will use some power. But if you use this direct from the 12 volt socket instead of the standard charging unit you have for your laptop, this will use a lot less power. And you can try that. You can plug a laptop in on a mains adapter and you can then plug one of these in and you'll see a significantly different amount of power you use when you're using the 12 volt side of stuff. So have a think of what you actually want to run and what's the simplest and the most efficient way of what you're going to run from it as well. Something else to consider is the physical shape and size of a unit. As you can see this, this is nice and square. All the outputs are on the front, so they're easy accessible, and it's only the inputs that are on the back. And although it's got a handle, the handle's out the way, so it's nice and easy to fit in a cupboard. You do need to ensure that the vents are clear on the side to allow the fans to run to keep it cool. But the physical size of these, you need to consider where you're going to put it. If you haven't got a lot of room in your camper van, or you're in a micro camper or your car camping, think of the physical shape and size and where you're actually going to use it. Because you may buy one that has leads out the side, leads out the other side, and it's totally awkward to actually store it somewhere and it takes up far too much space. But this is really well thought through on this one. Another good idea when you're using one of these is to think about through charging. So if I plug this into my camper van with this cigarette socket here into the back and into my camper van, this will be taking power out my van when I'm driving along and putting power into this. But if I want to charge my e-bike battery and I use the main socket on this to do it, if I do that when I'm actually driving, I'm actually putting some power back into this as well as taking power out through charging, which means I'm not draining too much of the power out the battery. I'm actually compensating for the power that's actually coming out the battery with putting this in from my car. Or likewise, you could do that with solar. Another thing to consider, and uh, EcoFlu do well in this as, as some of the other big brands do, is how long's the warranty. So you spend all this money on a product, something like this or something even bigger, you want to know that warranty is worthwhile and how long it's going to last. So we know cycle wise, this should last for 10 years. If you charge it and decharge it 3000 times, you're at 80%. So it should at least last 10 years in relation to that. I would imagine you'll get far more out of that, even if the capacity starts to drop. But it comes with a five year warranty. There's lots out there that only come with a one or a two year warranty. So these actually come with a five year warranty. So that's something else to consider. And considering that in the price of what I'm actually paying for, there's some peace of mind in knowing that you're getting a longer warranty of a piece of kit. And that might cost you more, but uh, the peace of mind so you don't have to replace it may pay off in the future. But to be fair, I've had lots of eco products and um, EcoFlow products and I've not had a problem with any of them. They've all been fantastic. Another thing to consider is you might buy this, the uh, EcoFlow River 2 Pro, and you might think that's perfect. It does everything I want it to do. There's enough power in there. It's fast charging. I can run it on solar. I can charge it from my van when I'm driving along. That's all I need. But consider in the future. In the future, you may decide you want more electrical products and this might not be able to cope with that. Now this one doesn't have an expandable battery port, 
some of the other EcoFlow and some of the other manufacturers do. So you might want to consider, particularly if money's tight, you buy a unit that you can expand on later on. So some of them have a socket on the back and you can buy a secondary battery that you plug into them. There's lots of uh, examples on EcoFlow's website. But the, the advantage of that is you could buy a unit, as I say, this one doesn't do it, but a bigger unit than this, and use it, it might meet all your needs. And then later on, you might decide, oh, I need a bit more power. I need a bit more capacity power. You can buy a plug-in battery and that would expand the capacity. It won't necessarily change the actual power output. So if it's a 1000 watt unit or a 2000 watt unit, it will still only run things at 2000 watts, but it may give you 4000 watts, um, 4 kilowatts of power to actually run through that inverter. And when you buy the expansion batteries, they're slightly cheaper because you're not buying all the gubbins that goes in this. And you do advantage, have advantages of buying backup batteries um, because you can charge this in one way and the backup battery separately. So it's something else to consider. If you're going to buy one and you think that's going to do me now and I can afford that particular one, but in the future I might need more power. You could try to sell it later on and buy a bigger one, or you could buy one that has an expandable port in it um, and you could buy a backup battery later on when you have more funds. Hope you found that useful. <laughs> and what I'm going to do now is that... Um, when people ask me questions of uh, what can I run and which one should I buy, I'll direct them to this video so that it helps me out as well. So I'm not asking the same question time and time again. Um, there's so many different sizes and there's so many different things. You've got to do your research and I hope this video has helped you to do that. Um, we are waiting for some on this channel, some giveaway results and they're coming out on the 31st of March. And then there's another review uh, outcome uh, for a giveaway. And I think that's uh, early April. So they'll be out in future videos. Lots more videos to come. And I believe that uh, EcoFlow are enjoying working with me. So they're going to send me some more kit. And hopefully we'll have some more giveaways as well. Thanks as always for watching. And we'll see you on the next one.